Family Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over 7.01 Atomic Review. Now, this entire lesson and the quiz is all stuff that we've covered before, mostly in first semester, but it's all stuff about the atom. So you have a choice. If you just want to take the pre-quiz and you know everything on the pre-quiz, you don't have to listen to the rest of this recording except, be warned, quiz 7.01 is worth 20 points. Okay, it's worth 20 points, and tests in this class are worth 60, labs in this class are worth 50, so it's a pretty substantial quiz. Um, but I'm not saying that to freak you out, I'm saying that to be warned, so don't think, oh yeah, I know everything, and just take it without looking at the pre-quiz first. So, look at the pre-quiz, if you have problems on the pre-quiz, then come back and watch it, or if you're like, no, nah, just sit and watch this first. Okay, here we go. Everything is made of one or more what? Elements. So everything in the entire universe, anything you can see, see or feel, everything is made of the elements. And you can find the elements where? On the periodic table. So you are made of hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and of course some other elements as well. The smallest piece of any element that still has the properties of that element. So in other words, if I have a piece of gold, I can keep cutting it smaller and smaller and smaller until I get to what? The smallest piece of any element that still has the properties of that element is the atom. Now, the atom is made of different parts, and we call those subatomic particles. So it's made of the protons, neutrons, and electrons, but all electrons in everything all across the universe are exactly the same. All protons are the same. All neutrons are the same. So it's just when they combine and you get an actual atom, then they have the properties of that element. Atoms are made of what subatomic particles? Electrons, protons, and neutrons. So they show the nucleus. On here, the nucleus is not a subatomic particle. It is just where the protons and neutrons are. So what are our charges of our subatomic particles? Protons are what? Electrons are what? Neutrons are what? P protons are p positive one. Electrons are negative one, and neutrons are neutral or zero, no charge. Where are they located? Protons and neutrons are in the nucleus or the center of the atom. So if I ask you where the nucleus is, I mean the center of the atom, and inside the nucleus are neutrons and protons. And electrons are traveling around on the outside. We can call those orbitals, shells electron cloud, or energy levels. Mass. A paperclip is one gram. One gram is a paperclip. An atom is 0 0.00000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
we say that they weigh zero even though they do weigh a little something. It's like if you step on the scale. If you step on the scale, hopefully you remember me saying this. Let's say you weigh 150 pounds and you cut your fingernails or you brush your hair and a piece of hair falls out. You step back on the scale, it's still going to say 150 pounds, although technically you weigh a little bit less because you cut your fingernails or a hair fell out of your head. But we can ignore that little tiny bit. So we ignore how much electrons weigh. What would the mass be if you had five protons and six neutrons? Well, it would be 11 because I have five of these plus six of those. Five plus six is 11. 11 what? What would my unit be? AMU. And we call this the atom's what number. So if I add up how heavy it is or how much the mass is, we would call it the mass number. So if my mass number was 11 AMUs, meaning I had five protons and six neutrons, which element would I have? So look up here. I gave you choices. You would have boron. Now if you're like, well, none of them's exactly 11. No, we have to round to the nearest whole number because of isotopes, and this is the overall abundance average. If you're not quite sure what I meant by that, don't worry about that. All you have to worry about is that you round to the nearest whole number. So 0.8 rounds up to 11 because $10.81 is closer to $11 than it is to $10. So if decimals confuse you, think of money. So boron weighs 11 AMU. Each atom of boron has a mass of 11 AMU. What is the mass number of oxygen? 16 AMUs. What is the eight? Okay, so what does this eight tell us? The eight is the atomic number which is the number of what? Protons. It's how many protons? Because if the number of protons changes, you change the element. So the number of protons is the atom's number. It's like the social security number. It never, ever changes. So what's the mass number of aluminum? What is the atomic number of aluminum? The mass number is 27. The atomic number is 13. How many protons, how many electrons, how many neutrons does aluminum have? And we're going to assume for these problems that the atom is neutral. So we have 13 protons, so 13 positives. And if it's neutral, the number of negatives has to equal the number of positives. So that way, if you have plus 13 minus 13, you get zero. It's neutral. And how many neutrons do I have? 14. And I got that by taking 27 minus 13 equals 14. Because we ignore how much the electrons weigh. If the whole thing weighs 27 and 13 of that is the protons, I subtract it to get my neutrons. Okay, what if I had 14 electrons? What about if I gained an electron? Then what? Well, I had 13 pluses and 13 minuses, but now I have an extra negative. Okay, I gained an electron. Electrons are negative. What's my new charge? Well, now my new charge is negative 1 because I still have 13 positives. Minus 14 gives me negative 1. So when you gain electrons because they're negative, the more you gain, the more negative you become. The more debt you owe somebody, the more money you owe your mom, the bigger your debt. If an atom gains electrons, it has a negative charge. If it loses electrons, we get rid of some of these bad things, it has a positive charge. What do we call an atom with a charge? There's a vocab word. It starts with an I. It's an ion. So any atom with a charge is an ion. Okay, now let's go back to aluminum. 13 protons, 13 electrons, so it's neutral. 14 neutrons. What if I had 15 neutrons? What change is that? Well, it would have a new mass. And how much would the new mass be? It would be 28 because 15 plus 13 equals 28 because we just add up our protons and our neutrons when it comes to 
Sorry about that. We add up our protons and our neutrons when it comes to the mass. So the new mass would be 28, and the vocab word for that one is isotope. So if you notice, I wrote it kind of funny with zeros. And if this helps you remember it, go for it. Zeros because neutrons are what I am changing, and neutrons have zero charge. So an isotope. So when I change the number of neutrons, I make it heavier. Or I could take some neutrons away and make it lighter. Either way, it doesn't matter. If I change the neutrons, it's an isotope. If I change the electrons, it's an ion, because now I have a positive or negative charge. What if I had 14 protons? Okay, so you know what? Let's move this question up here. So what if I had 14 protons? Now what? Now I have a new element. I have silicon. The only way to make a new element is to change the number of protons. And that's a nuclear reaction. And that's what we're going to be talking about in Unit 7. So far, we have not been talking about nuclear reactions. Up until this unit, we never, ever change the number of protons. So what happens when atoms bond? Does it make a new form or a new substance? If atoms bond, we make a new substance. Is that chemical or physical change? Making a new substance is a chemical change. What subatomic particle or particles are gained, lost, or shared when we bond atoms? The electrons. So electrons are gained, lost, or shared, depending if it's covalent, metallic, ionic. And that's how we have a chemical bond, a chemical reaction. Like I said, we're going to start talking about nuclear reactions or reactions inside the nucleus when we add or lose protons, but that's coming up. So up until now, all the reactions we've talked about, all the reactions that you've probably seen in your entire life are chemical reactions. Nuclear reactions. Nuclear reactions, when we change the number of protons, this is fission, fusion. It's the way the sun works. Okay? So, but so far we've been talking about chemical reactions and the electrons are gained, lost, or shared. All right, as always, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, go ahead and take the pre-quiz.